This conference will now be recorded. Good timing. Hey, Ellen. Okay, I'm so happy everybody's here today. Um, I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. And I always have to take a deep breath after I say that. Or maybe I should before I say that because it's kind of a mouthful. Hey, Marlon, how are you? Um, it's really good to have y'all here uh, uh, joining us today uh, in our discussion. Actually, the first one of 2021, hard to believe. We skipped uh, December because we figured people will be pretty busy doing their own stuff. Um, so we, we're coming right into the new year with a new topic. Um, and we decided to talk about mobile library initiatives and sort of related topics uh, because we had some people who uh, indicated they were interested in hearing about what others are doing or sharing what it is that they're doing with their mobile libraries. So um, we hope uh, that um, you will share what you would like to talk about as well. Uh, we do have a topic, but if we veer to the left or the right, that's fine as well. I want to you know, just encourage you to, to share whatever is on your mind today or maybe even yesterday. Um, I want to mention just a few housekeeping items, of course, before we get started. Uh, we've muted everyone at this point, uh, but we'll unmute you once the discussion begins. If, if you would please mute yourself, that might cut back on some feedback or maybe just dogs howling or kitty cats crying, who knows, you know, depending on where you are. Um, so if you would just mute yourself until you're ready to talk, then, then just jump right in. Uh, the chat uh, box is open and available for you to communicate through if you would prefer to use that method. Um, we'll, of course, be monitoring it for any questions. Uh, so don't worry. We're looking at what you're sharing and, and that uh, we appreciate your you're uh, communicating in that way if that's what you prefer. If you get dropped or you're having bandwidth issues, don't get off. <laughs> Just shut down your uh, webcam if you have one that might help or log off and come back in, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, we'd love to be able to see your beautiful faces today if you would like to share them and you're able to. Um, if you cannot, we'll just wait uh, until we hear your lovely voice then. Uh, you can, of course, speak without your webcam, but again, we would love to see you. I'm sure everyone knows, you know, the drill. Everybody's so used to meeting virtually <laughs> that some of this is so repetitious. It's like being on an airplane for years and years, you know, and knowing that drill at the beginning, you know, the clicking your, your seatbelt together, breathing before your you know infant does <laughs> or whatever but uh just um you want to make sure that everybody knows and feels comfortable with what we're doing here today uh this session will be recorded and made available on bld's youtube channel if you're not familiar with that channel please take a look we have lots of stuff on our, our channel that you may be interested in that have nothing to do with today's topic. Uh, and feel free to share those links with any who are unable to join us today. So uh, we have a few people online who are going to talk to us about their experiences with uh, mobile or big bookmobiles or other alternative ways of reaching uh, external library folks, communities, neighborhoods, um, another part of the county that you might uh, serve, but uh, maybe they're not using your library resources as much as you would like them to, or they just can't, or for whatever reason, you want to uh, explore a bookmobile or other uh, uh, means of reaching that part of your community. So I, I kind of want to start with Ellen Randolph today because she, they recently, her library um, recently uh, 
purchased, I guess you would say, a bookmobile and, and Ellen's from Boca Raton uh, Public Library. We're so glad you're here with us today, Ellen. Um, would you share with us a little bit about what made your library decide to um, pursue this path? Uh, you know, what was the planning behind it, funding, stumbling blocks, aha moments, whatever you want to share, that would be great. Okay, um, so my name is Ellen Randolph. I am the library director at Boca Raton Public Library. Um, we are in South Palm Beach at the very edge of South Palm Beach. Um, and we have two relatively new buildings which are uh, beautiful and we love them. But what we've discovered is there are certain areas of the city that are not easily reachable by public transportation in the city of Boca Raton. And um, so we had some gaps. We also have had um, a lot of events we were involved with so we were hauling a lot of stuff around in our trunks of our cars um, also we already had a pilot program at one of the big gated neighborhoods in which we went to their um, two actually of their community centers that were part of their buildings big buildings and we went twice a week and we would do programs and bring books that they had checked out um, put on hold and we had checked out for them so it was sort of like a curbside service except where we brought it to their community center um, and that had become so popular that it actually was becoming too much it was you know we were hauling a lot of books around and it was becoming awkward it was a great way to start though it kind of get let us kind of see what the interest was in a delivery service not door to door but close to their community center so this works for good high, for high rises and um, assisted living right so that's what we were using it for and um, so about uh, so we started this in 2000 um, at the end of 2018 we started talking about it 2019 it went fairly rapidly in the sense that um as soon as i got permission from the city to have an outreach vehicle because outreach was something that's relatively new for the city from the library because the perception was we had these two buildings we didn't really need to do more and i kind of had to show them like where the gaps were and then um, i went to the friends and i asked for the funding which made it a lot easier to get and what happened was in, i don't know um sometime in the spring of 2019 i think um, there was an article about a kansas city library on the go a uh, van this red van you may remember the red van and i saw that and i went aha that's what we need we need something like this a small transit van this is not a bookmobile that you can walk into but it does have um carts that uh clip to the sides inside so you don't have to take stuff on and off of carts and it has a lift on the back so you just unclip the carts and roll them to the lift and they rolls down to the ground and you set them out it has an awning when we have a big tablecloth with our name on it and um on the sides of the van i'm going to put some pictures in the chat here in a minute on the sides of the van um, basically says you know this is our mobile library van and like what is this like what are we doing right so we we had already been doing some things we were going to public events we were doing this delivery service we knew we had gaps in transportation for certain high density areas that there was uh, not good public transportation and also some areas where there was um, uh, I would say economically disadvantaged only in the sense that one car per family and the other person in the family might not have the transportation they need. So in that sense, um, and also we had some high density areas that had a lot of children and teens that we knew we could do more programming to them after school if we could get to them instead of trying to make them come to us. And um, so all these needs kind of coalesced. Um, for us, the friends made the difference. We went to the friends and said, here's what we need. Originally, we asked for 50000 because we had no idea, <laughs> but it was 77000 for just the van. Um, and I'll put some more information in the chat. Um, and it was about 3000 for the wrap. But, you know, you could do it a lot cheaper. Now that I know what I know, I definitely, you could definitely do this with a used van without much trouble. Um, and that they're definitely a cheaper way to do it. Now we discovered that having a van that you could go inside and treat like a real bookmobile, you know, go inside, pick your books off the shelf and check it off from the, check them out from the driver was way more expensive because of insurance, because of over the size of the, uh, the vehicle has so has to be so much taller so people can walk inside. Um, in addition to, um, 
you know, doors have to be a certain kinds of hydraulic doors and everything. It's just a much bigger deal to have a walk-in bookmobile. Um, but the two things that we discovered while we were kind of considering that was that um, there are a lot of used big buses around. So you could convert a bus if you really had, um, you know, the focus to do it because there are a lot of used buses around to convert potentially. Um, but in our case, what we needed was kind of um, flexible and small enough to be able to go to these events and park in the parking spaces. So that's what you kind of have to think through. And we, we sort of did, which is we said, okay, which are the situations in which we already are doing something and what would be helpful for that? And then which were the situations that we'd like to be able to do and what would be helpful for that? And what we discovered is a very big, vehicle was not going to work. We mm -hmm. were not going to be able to park it anywhere. It was going to be harder to get into certain neighborhoods. You know, it's just a bigger production. And many of the people we were trying to serve were either young or seniors and their ability to walk a long distance to the bus was just not there. Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of think all that through and decide what was for us. A smaller vehicle was better. So ours is a transit van that's been converted. Now, a side thing that's really been helpful already is that it acts like a billboard. So from the perspective of really showing that the library is current and that you have people doing different things because the pictures on the van show people using devices and, and, and having a meeting and doing more than just reading, that was very useful too, especially in Boca. You can't have a billboard in Boca. Uh, so, you know, for me, this is like a mobile billboard that we're, I wouldn't be able to have. Some cities will let you have bus benches, which are pretty good promotional tools, but we don't have that. So this for, was all also an advantage. Um, so one of the stumbling block blocks was the sheer length of time it takes. So you've got to have somebody kind of can stay with it and keep moving it and realizing that each step is is an important part and just move one step forward, one step forward, one step forward. This is not something that happens in a season. So you just kind of have to say, what do I need to do to get the approval for this, to get the next stage done, to get the next stage done? And then COVID happened, right? So now we have this brand new, really wonderful van that we're dying to use. And, you know, we can't get it on the road because we're not allowed to do outreach right now. So we're driving around so people can see it. So the billboard thing is kind of taking <laughs> off now <laughs> because it's the only thing we can do. So, um, so we are uh, very excited to have it, but we're kind of at the front end. And just, I won't go into this right now, but just so you know, we are about to start Little Free Libraries, and we just did two story walks. So if you want to talk about story walks, we got two, and they're going fantastic, and that is very inexpensive to get going. So that's a good one that you could definitely do, that if you need to do something outside, I really recommend Story Walk. Story Walk is great, easy to do, and you don't have to use the brand name Story Walk. You could do your own. So if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'll throw some pictures in the chat. Anybody have any questions they want to ask of Ellen? I think when you see the pictures, you'll be more excited. It seems more real when you see a picture. Let's see if it'll let me do it. I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, sure. So do you have a, a hot spot in the van? So people oh, can good question. Yeah, so all right. So the van has a hydraulic lift on the back. Um, side doors that you know open like a van from the side. Um, it has Wi-Fi. Uh, we are using MiFi. So what we talked about is a Wi-Fi that's established in the van is actually takes up more space and is more expensive. Using MiFi's is better for the van. Now we are using a small van. If you have a full-on bookmobile, you might need something more robust. But for us, we have a MiFi. And then we also have two other outreach MiFi's we could bring in if it's some kind of bigger event that we need our own MiFi to do card signups and then people around us can use our other one. Um, and then we also have lights on the inside and the outside and we have an awning that rolls out. The awning I really recommend. It's already really obvious it's going to be useful to have the awning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we don't have laptops other than we have laptops that we could take with us to an event, but the van itself does not come with like laptops. So it's not a tech van. And it's not really a bookmobile. It's a outreach van. That's really kind of the better way to look at it. I think the thing that it maybe is a little different is that it has these carts that are clipped on inside. So you don't have to constantly take things in and out when you want to have a selection for people to browse. 
So, and it also has tracking on the floor where you can clip down a cart. So if you want to roll a whole cart of stuff in, like you have an activity and you want to roll a cart into the middle of the van, you can roll it in the van and then it has like tracking on the floor where it can clip in. Wow. We didn't actually use that yet. It looks good, but I'm not sure. I think it'll work. <laughs> so, uh, Kelsey asked a question. She says, uh, if I recall re correctly, the majority of Boca Raton neighborhoods are gated. Are yeah. areas that are not gated experiencing access issues? So access is sort of a relative term in the sense that the buildings are open, but if you don't have transportation, the access is limited because we don't have public transportation running right past the buildings, right? Um, we can go into most communities because we can just call ahead and they'll let us in. Um, the, we were doing that even when we were used in just our SUV, our own cars, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But... It, the ungated communities are the ones where we're actually looking more carefully at because we know that there's a higher density there and also um, there are more disadvantaged persons of different types that are looking for assistance. Um, and some of this could be training with tech um, in, you know, in a kind of an outdoor setting or possibly in a community room. And then some of this could be just having checkout privileges come to you so you don't have to like figure out how to get to the library. And then some of it is information. Um, I think we're, we're thinking we're going to have to do pop-ups of things like how to apply for a job and things like that. Um, but those communities are not usually gated and the biggest problem there is going to be parking. The parking, people are parking in the swales, they're parking in, in tight corners and the van, you know, is smaller, but but still we'll have to kind of think that through about we're going to a particular um, apartment community and they're using all their spaces up. What can, you know, where are we going to be? So that's okay. a little beginning you have to think ahead. Um, I see the next, no, you do not have to have a commercial driver's license. This is a transit van. Um, it's a smaller vehicle, kind of like um, an ice cream truck. Okay. So I will figure out how to put a picture in here. Um, but it's uh, you can use a regular driver's license. We have to get certification from the city, but that's because of city rule, not not because of the van itself. Um, we do not have a dedicated librarian. What we have is an outreach team that do a lot of different things, including setting up uh, community bookshelves, which are bookshelves within nonprofits that we keep st uh, stocked with. Um, um, bookstore donations that are nice that we've vetted and um, it's just take one leave one kind of like a like a, a little free library so for us these things are all coming together little free libraries community bookshelves story walks and the outreach van are all coming together to say we can do more for the people who can't come in and how how can we do that and, and where can we meet them you know at what they need a lot of times it's just transportation issues sometimes it's technology um, but for us transportation is a bigger deal because of the way the public buses lines are in the city you know if you're not on the main road you could be a fairly lengthy walk from a bus stop so um, that's what we're working on um, pictures yes I got to figure out how to put them in the list so I'll do that next and Boys and Girls Clubs, yes. Yeah. So YMCA we're looking at. Um, we already have, we're already in with um, uh, Public Housing uh, Community Center. And then we're about to start with Boca Helping Hands. They've approved it, but then COVID happened. So now we've got to, uh, you know, wait for that to kind of end. So COVID's kind of interrupted our time frame. But on the other hand, uh, some things we were still in the process of getting purchased. So, you know, assuming that we can start doing some outreach this summer, even if only outside, um, we haven't lost that much time. It, it, to do the van, it's a year and a half. You have to, unless somebody gives you a van and you can just get started, like, but, I'll, but I will say, it's not really necessary to do everything. You know, if you just get started, that's probably half the battle. The wrap of a wrapping a van, I'll tell you, is $2,000. So if you want to take an older van, if, if you can get somebody to give you one or you can buy a used one or your city has one that they can repurpose, getting it wrapped, don't be afraid about that. That's no big deal. And you can get that done very easily and make that van look super sharp really quick. And um, so, you know, mostly just kind of think about how you'd like to get started. And vans you know, 
a little a little bit is a good way to start because you'll get people interested in helping you out once you once they see you around that's how what happened with us and the friends they saw us doing all these bits and pieces of things it was easier to say we need to consolidate all these little things that we're doing into this one service which we have named mobile library services and it it's a clear name it's not all that sexy but it's clear that everybody goes i know exactly what that is i know why you're doing it and you know it just it just clarified real quick it covers all these different things so awesome yeah, it's it's exciting. It's one of the most exciting projects we've worked on in a couple of years that we just totally love. And Story Walk, let me tell you, Story Walk. <laughs> we can talk about that another time. So that's an awesome project too. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Uh, insurance wise, I assume upkeep and insurance for a van is probably a little more reasonable than for a larger vehicle. That's what that's what we discovered, um, but we didn't like I said we decided beforehand we didn't we didn't think that the larger vehicle was going to be flexible enough for us, um, and also too I'll tell you I was a little affected by um, when I was at Cephalon, um maybe two years ago somebody had a nice a real nice tech van and I was like ooh this is nice but then I, I my first thought was you know this might be tough to get into some of those neighborhoods with you know that we are basically taking up their whole street to park it and I you know that kind of influenced part of the conversation was that we need to be flexible and be able to get into more locations especially events where oftentimes the best you can get is two parking spaces you don't want to be so much bigger that you can't you know, you've got to be over with a blood mobile and you're not with the main, the main uh, tents and things. So mm -hmm. smaller has some advantage. We wanted to be able to, you know, use it ourselves without having to, you know, ask for a lot of help. But you definitely you could start with a used van and wrap it without that much difficulty if you can get somebody to give you a van. If your city, or in our case, we're a city, but if, you're, if your city or your uh, county already has a fleet, department that would be my first call after talking to your supervisor about whether this is even feasible is a call at fleet and say what's the chance I can have a used van you know maybe maybe the electricians you know for municipal services are like we need an upgrade but you can you still use that van so there might be other ways around it in our case we found that it was easier because the friends were willing to fund it to do it this way now gumbo limbo nature center in the city also got a van around the same time and the way their friends did it was they they did the whole van they picked everything they did, did the did the wrap they did everything and presented it as a van complete whereas ours we were presented with a check for the cost of the van so and for us it was better because we can control what mm -hmm. we wanted to put inside and how we wanted it to look now Gumbelin was very happy with what they have and it's super cute but with friends you've got to kind of decide which direction is better if you've got a friends group who can do it now mm -hmm. the con for us was this year the friends group couldn't fund us not only because of covid but because they gave us so much last year for the van yeah so we had to kind of say okay we recognize you need to rebuild your reserves so we're not going to ask anything this year so it's a trade-off mm -hmm. trade any questions anybody I'd be happy to talk to anybody privately if they want to get into the nitty gritty details. <laughs> Great, Ellen. Yeah, and if you would share those pictures, that would be good. I will. I'll figure out how to get them to, you can't drag and drop, so I'll have to figure out how to do this. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll do that while everybody else is talking. All right, so um, while you're doing that and everybody's thinking about questions, I want to uh, ask um, Kelsey if she would be willing to talk to us about her idea for a mobile service in her community and county. Kelsey Rantanen, is that how you say your name? Kelsey Rantanen, yes. yes. It's one of the Great. ways. Um, so I randomly emailed the Department of State with just an idea that I had. This is not something we've implemented in my library. Um, but essentially, so to give you a little background information, I live in Panama City, Florida, which in 2018 was hit by a Category 5 hurricane, um, Hurricane Michael, and it pretty much devastated the region. There's still homes that are like just shells 
and boarded up and all kinds of chaos. Um, but one of the, we lost one of our libraries um, was damaged. The roof was removed. Another one uh, was the only operable municipal building for one of our cities. So they ended up closing down the library and taking over it. Um, another library that was not part of our system uh, was completely closed down because the building was destroyed. And then our building experienced some damage and we were closed for quite a while. Um, we didn't start opening, we didn't open back up for about probably two months. So some of my experiences with that, um, especially from the community aspect is that I think it was might have been difficult for some people to immediately be able to like claim insurance or contact loved ones. Um, you know, I saw a lot of, there's a lot of like impromptu and like kind of thrown together like service accesses and everything for like insurance companies. But I think that a disaster response mobile library that maybe went around the state and helped areas um, to help the general the, the general person rather than like focusing on the company is something that might be doable. Um, it could either be stationed with a library that was damaged or be, be deployed to areas that maybe a library services aren't able to reach, whether it's because an area is so damaged or something like that. Um, so that, that was just my idea. Um, it could be either a van or a truck, or do you, are you guys familiar with what a Connex is? Like, a, a, so you guys know what a shipping container looks like on back, like an 18 wheeler. Uh -huh. So I imagine something that could, a smaller version of that, that could be like towed around and dropped off somewhere or something like that. Um, it could involve like a generator, laptops, a couple printers, scanners, and thumb drives so that people could do what they needed to try and get their needs met in like the immediate aftermath of a hurricane or another natural disaster. That was literally just an idea. I just love this idea. I thought it was a great idea that I wanted y'all to hear about. Um, and uh, I don't know that it's something that that we can do with a, a here at DLIS, but oh, um, but we can uh, think about other ways of doing something like this. And and maybe Marion could jump on with us right now. Marion Dini, our grants person, is here with us to talk a little bit about um, purchasing uh, mobile um, mobile services, not services, um, um, vans or bookmobiles or whatever, uh, using grant funds or not. Uh, I love the idea that your friends group was, I mean, gosh, that's really generous of your friends group, which is awesome. Um, but Marion, you want to take it over for just uh, a second? Sure. I'd be glad to chat a little bit. Uh, the biggest thing that I, I'm going to throw, I hate to throw water on this whole idea, is right now is some of our grant rules have changed and you would not be able to use grant funds to actually purchase a vehicle because of some requirements by that the state has in place that you have to have some special permissions in order to be able to request a vehicle and those have those are going into effect this year um, that being said there's you could use grant funds to get the programs and services set up if you can find a way to fund the vehicle or to uh, repurpose a vehicle, uh, as Ellen said, um, but you could get the funding for um, uh, the, the things that go into it, such as the computers, materials, resources, those types of things would all be allowable uh, with the grants. We we have in the past have funded vehicles. As I said, we can't do that anymore, unfortunately. But the biggest thing to remember that I have seen in my years of look, watching people go through, I'll, I'll say attempt, because they were all successful in the end, but to go through the painful process of getting a vehicle is start early. If you think you've given yourself enough time, start twice as early. 
Um, and again, start even earlier because what we have seen with people that have had have had funding and had a full 12 months to purchase a vehicle, they were writing the check on the last day they were allowed to pay out funds for a vehicle. So that's just observational, especially if you're having a custom built vehicle where the you put out you have to go through the processes of depending on the size of the vehicle or what you're wanting to do you are going to have to come up with specifications you're going to have to go out to bid for the vehicle probably um and when you have bids and you have potential protests on the bids and all of these things take time once you've awarded the grant uh, contract for a vehicle then you um have to wait for them to build it and that may involve them piecing parts, not counting a pandemic or a hurricane, um, but getting a chassis in, getting the body in, getting all the parts put together, and then getting it all tested and ready for delivery. And it just takes time. Um, it's not something you can run to the corner market and buy, you know, with a, with a company, with a county or city check, unfortunately. Uh, but there are ways to work around that. Um, I've seen vehicles purchased, uh, as Ellen said, from the small transit vans or a cargo van. Uh, all the way up to the the monster buses, which is why I had put the comment in there. If you're considering a program, you need to be sure that you may not require a commercial, whatever size vehicle you're getting does not require a commercial driver's license. We've had some folks who bought one recently that they made sure to have it just under that limit of what you had to do to have a commercial driver's license so that folks A, felt comfortable driving it and B, did not have to go and get the special licensing. But then we've also had folks in the past purchase the big buses. So uh, you can really get creative with some of these things. And as you said, the, the wraps are wonderful. They are not expensive. I've used wraps personally on a trailer that I have. Very easy to install once you come up with the design, they do it all for you and it's, it's a great billboard, great rolling billboard. Um, I got to agree with you on that one. <laughs> um, that's the best. Anybody have any questions on that? I mean, as I'm not saying that it's, you know, I don't have the perfect answer here for it, but there's a lot of creative ways to do things. If you can find a vehicle, then you can maybe put the stuff in it, that type of thing with grant funds, uh, those types of things. But they, it does take time. Is there a way, I'm trying to think of an, a way, uh, for example, to to think about uh, what Kelsey has, has um, proposed, would there be a way for a library system or something like that to purchase or you know somehow get a, a, a vehicle to to create a disaster response mobile library um, and then uh, I don't want to use the term rent it out, but if you did cost recovery and you used uh, grant funds to purchase or to retrofit, can you retrofit something like this using grant funds? Um, it depends upon what you're trying to do. I would have to, I'd need more specifics. Um, the biggest problem with, with that type of a function though, is you know, how you don't want to just sitting there for two years and then be needed. When it's needed, you know, it's needed now, like like uh, like she had said. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what a perfect answer is. It's um, unless you're someone that does go out around. That's just my view on it. You're going out around trying to do a lot of those things. Um, it's possible that perhaps some libraries in a in a uh, in a region could come together and come up with something. Um, your Red Cross might have something. I don't know. Um, there's different ways to do it, but like with the grant funding, you might be able to do that to, to retrofit it possibly. But then, you know, would you have some agreement with this? You'd have to figure out some kind of agreements that it could be taken somewhere to be used and that kind of a, you know, with another part of the county, another part of the state, you know, first time Panhandle has been hit in how many years? I'm not saying, you know, knock wood, nothing will happen again, but if you when it sits there for 20 years and nobody gets hit again, then what? Um, you know, um, I, I don't know. Um, well, are, anybody's um, got any ideas? I'm open, you know. <laughs> I do want to cut in really quick. Um, we, when our Parker Library was closed, 
we received a mobile library from Ohio. Right. Um, it was either Dayton or another large county where they let us borrow their mobile library kind of for these reasons um, for about a year, year and a half. Yeah. And then it was moved over to the, about two cities over and used there for where their building was completely flattened. Um, so it, it was definitely useful because people were able to still check out books, um, access the internet, it came with the hotspot. And another part, um, another point that I was thinking is that if we had to, if, if this was something someone was, in, if a system was interested in, instead of making it a vehicle, you could maybe have like a small, disaster go kit if that makes sense like you know how they have like those big foot lockers you could try having like a hot mm -hmm. spot you could try having something that's like a small generator or and that, that's a that definite big. possibility there's a lot of libraries that have uh as part after some of the storms from a few years back when they went through the center of the states and stuff a lot of libraries were recognized as vital to doing just what you're talking about and they were given priority for um, uh, establishment of generators, getting generators set up, or they are prioritized right along with some of the other emergency services to get power restored or emergency generators brought in so that the library can function as, as, as you said, the insurance, they have function as cooling stations so people can get out of the heat, uh, yep. internet access, uh, computer access, uh, FEMA sets up their, um, I'm not to say the right words, their assistance stations there. Uh, most folks know where the library is, that type of thing. Um, and so that a lot of folks do that some to some degree or another. Nobody, I don't think anybody does it all the same. Um, no, but it's, I mean, so for, we're part of a tri-county mm -hmm. system and mm -hmm. to, to two or three of our libraries were fully functioning with no issues because they missed out on the damage, but then the rest of the system was destroyed. Yeah, destroyed. exactly. And also your library just is putting on the road right now a, uh, a brand new vehicle. Yes, it is, which I can't comment on because I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. Ellen said that she would share her screen to show the pictures. I think, uh, India, you're still working on trying to get them in chat as well. Yeah, I think Ellen sharing her screen might be the easiest route, just because okay. that or we can get those files and share them after the meeting through an email. Or we could do both. So, Casey, okay, there's so no way to do that. To okay. That the um, drag and drop doesn't work. Thank you. <laughs> I was feeling like oh, I'm really missing something here. <laughs> no, I was with you as well. Did you share those, your screen for I a minute? I can. Sir? Let's see if it'll let me do. I think you have to. Thanks very much, Kelsey, for your ideas. Um, and Marlon shared we've utilized our library's Technobus a little bit in that capacity, offering people Wi Fi and access to internet and email following hurricanes. Awesome. A techno bus. That sounds very big. <laughs> um, while Ellen is doing that. I think you have to make me the presenter oh, for a minute. Whoops. Yeah, just for a minute. Okay. I okay. just made you the presenter. Okay. Can you see this? screen oh good okay yeah. all right so let's see if i can make these a little closer how about now okay good all right so you can see it's just a little transit van it's not huge it drives like an suv uh, uh -huh. it's totally doable all right so here for, for perspective here's shiloh and me we're very happy after a year and a half we're like it's here see these carts in here i probably have another picture that does that um let's see oh yeah okay so the carts are clipped to the wall, okay? So it's just, I mean, you could probably make this yourself. We, we bought it 
from a company that does it, but you could probably make this yourself. And this particular type of cart clips into the back, but you certainly could find some other way to clip it in. But we're still going to have to use some kind of cording to keep the books from falling out, although we drive very slowly in this. Um, but it, it's still pretty good and it makes it possible. So we have, um, so we have a, this is a, um, a lift, right? So we can just roll it down the lift and take it down. And so what that means is that we can also use this van in a pinch. We can use it to carry other things too. So we're, you know, we were trying to double up on a lot of different things. Um, and then let's see what else here. Um, so this has two sides to it. Um, and the pictures are a little different on each side. Now, why this tree? This is our Friends logo. So since the Friends funded us, we try to be sensitive to the fact that they like certain designs. But we, when we chose the pictures, we chose the pictures of people kind of doing different things to try to help people understand. It's, you know, the library is more than books, obviously. Um, and so let me see if I have a picture of the other side here. Here's the back. So the back. You know, and you can see from inside, you can't see that there's anything on these windows. It's completely clear inside. Oh, yeah. um, so it's very easy to drive. Um, I don't, let's see. Okay, it's this really side, cool. it's not a great picture here, but this is the awning. It comes out and then we can put a table in front so it creates a space for a for an, at events. And it's small enough that it, we practice with it, <laughs> is that we can park it in one of these spaces and then the other space becomes our outreach space if we have to fit that direction. Um, if we can fit this way in the parking space, meaning horizontally, that's even better, but it does fit. So that was important too, to make sure it would fit. And let's see, you got staff people getting really excited here. And how then so there's different pictures on different sides. Yeah. How far out does the awning extend? Pretty far. Uh, I don't know if I have one where it's open yet because this is so new we haven't um, taken all our pictures. It comes out um, as far as an RV. So has extendable arms and comes out. So all this oh. kind of goes up in this little thing, which is kind of amazing. And then there's a little light right here too for outside if it's getting dark. Um, you can't see on this one very well, but we actually have words on the top because um, our city uses um, drones at events. So we wanted to make sure <laughs> we got in drone view. <laughs> well, so I'll let you know if that actually works. That was sort of like pie in the sky. We'll see if it happens. But it's, it's there are words on the top that basically say the same thing and different pictures on each side. So it's simple, straight up, you know, um, it's not that complicated. Um, and, if, you know, if it wasn't new, it would have been less expensive. You certainly could do almost the same thing with a used van. You know, you really just need somebody. I mean, plumbers have this, this, this stuff inside all their vans, right? I mean, plumbers can do it. We can do it. So you could probably get this welded on yourself and have something to attach your carts to. The big thing is, is can you get your cart out without a lift? So the other thing to look at, and I've seen when we were doing research, were people using the um, assisted living vans, you know, the vans that take the residents to the mall or take them to the doctor or whatever, that have a lift on the back. You might mm -hmm. be able to find something like that less expensive and, and, you know, just do the inside part yourself. It's basic. It's basic, but basic for 77000 So that's kind of where you probably could do it cheaper with, if you have, you know, if you look around a bit. For us, the main thing was, would our fleet department let us do it? And that was an important first question. Okay, I hope that helps you visualize a little bit. That's wonderful, thank you. Okay, so uh, we're, <clears throat> excuse me, also very lucky to have Cindy Ansel with us today, who is going to talk to you a little bit about what they did as an option or an alternative to a, an expensive purchase like a, a van or a bookmobile or whatever. So Cindy, would you share your ideas with us? You're, you're muted. Can you unmute? Thank you. Still not working.
Uh, India, is she unmuted on our end too? Yeah. Yes, she is. Cindy, if you click on the little settings icon in the top right corner of your screen, you might be able to change your microphone input. Make sure it's selected on the right one. Oh, we can hear you. You can hear me now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, great, great. Well, um, we we looked into getting a, a van or a bookmobile and it was just beyond our uh, price range. We weren't able to, to get that. And so one of the friends of the library, uh, she got all excited. Her name's Mary Lindsay. She was the FLA Volunteer of the Year last year. She got all excited about having little free libraries around our town. And so she got a grant and she was able to get with the grant 60, 60 of the little free libraries. And she went to the city and got them to support the project, allowing us to put them on all our school properties uh, and the swale, you know, and um, so now this started in, um, in 2015. So today, I mean, today, as of now, we have like 150 of these little free libraries around our town, but it's a little bit different than you know, the way a lot of communities have them where individuals just put up a little free library. Ours is done by the Little Free Library project. They buy all the Little Free Libraries. Well, they don't buy them anymore because we have a city commissioner who's a woodworker and he builds them for us now. So uh, we, we build the libraries. We have local artists that paint the libraries for us. And then people just apply to, to get one. We put them in all the public parks. We put them on at the beach, on the at the boat dock, uh, you know, every school has them. The, the goal was to have a little free library in walking distance of every um, resident in Lake Worth Beach. So uh, we've, pretty, we've accomplished that. Um, when you apply to get a little free library, um, you agree to be a steward taking care of it. And we have guidelines of how you take care of them and also for example, I'm the steward of three little free libraries, but I don't have one at my home. So you can just, so each library basically has two people that are in charge of making sure it's clean, making sure it's filled with books. We get the books from the school district, from the books that they um, discard, uh, and the rest are all um, donated. Uh, the Literacy Coalition gives us books too, but mainly it's just citizens. We have um, a couple of places where they can uh, deliver them. So, um, so far since uh, 2015, we've distributed 500,000 books um, through the Little Free Libraries. And it's, um, you know, they, they're great because they're open 24-7. Uh, it was, you know, we had to go to the schools and teach the kids that they were allowed to approach these and open them and take things out of them that you, you know, aren't stealing that, you know, it's, it's a gift for you. Um, we don't worry too much about books coming back. It's basically getting books out and it's, it is basically books. I mean, it's not all these other services that you can do with these vans, but, um, it was able to, when we had to close for COVID for so long, we got lots of uh, response from people that said, you know, if it wasn't for the little free libraries, I wouldn't have had books to read or anything like that. So it's, it really filled a need when the library was closed that we hadn't imagined uh, that being something that it would do. Wow. Ellen asks, how do you count use? Yeah, how do you count? Well, <laughs> the stewards keep track, and I give those uh, give those um, statistics to Mary, who's in charge of the project. We also move them if 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 we put them in a place and they, for example, if they get vandalized, um, you know, we'll take it out and put it in another place. 
uh, you know, sometimes it's within the same park, but it's just a different area that we hope, you know, is maybe a little bit safer. If we find that there's some that people just aren't using at all, you know, we move them to more, uh, you know, other areas. So we don't put them in concrete. They're, uh, it's a big post that goes in, but they're not like cemented in because the Little Free Library National or International told us don't put them in concrete because they rot and it'll just fall off. So <laughs> the hardest part is during the hurricanes. I mean, we empty them and we do take them all down, which, you know, that's a huge job, but uh, we, we have done that. Um, but we found that if we empty them, they're able to withstand a pretty good amount of wind. So, wow. so so uh, Ellen asked, did you have to get approval to put them in the swale? Yes. And that was what we, the one reason that Mary's been so successful with this project is she went to the city first and uh, got their agreement to be able to put them in the swale and in, in these different uh, public places. Um, some of them are really uh, beautiful. I mean, we have stained glass ones. We have terracotta ones. We have because our artists all go crazy in decorating them. So they're really they're really quite pretty. But um, we haven't really uh, uh, they do need tending, though, because people will put garbage in them. People uh, will think they're helping out, and, you know, put a lot of trash in, you know, we, so you you end up when you're a steward really taking out more than you're putting in. But, um, you know, that's, the, you know, we try to describe to people like we don't put in religious materials, we don't put in political materials, nothing that's uh, would be considered for adults only that's, you know, uh, would not be appropriate for children. So, and they have to be in good shape. You know, you can't, they can't be roached up or anything like that. Yeah, that's awesome. So 500,000. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been, it's really good. We we have, a, our city is really in a literacy crisis and we're trying to address it every way we can. And a lot of it was just in trying to just get books in people's hands. Um, but a lot, and we were thinking when we started more about maybe kids or, but uh, our seniors have really uh, loved it because, you know, I, I just, I don't know why I, I thought our, our library was pretty easy to get to, but if you're a senior and you don't drive and uh, you know, you can't walk that far, you can walk a couple of blocks maybe, um, you know, they're able to really use them a lot. Uh, nursing homes, that's another place we've put them. We have them in the fire department. We have them in the lobby of the police uh, station, um, restaurants, um, anywhere people people are. Oh, wonderful. Golly. Yeah, we would love to see pictures of your, your more decorative ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we we do have some amazing ones. We have a, a barefoot mailman one. We have um, that tells the story. We have uh, a Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Uh, one of our stewards, her father was the one who wrote that um, story, Rudolph story. So uh, we have one painted like Rudolph. We have <laughs> they're all very different, uh, very very different depending on the artist, but. Uh, and the artists understand that if the art does not, you know, uh, wear well, that we might sand it down and, and ask them to do another one. But it's, you know, we can't preserve them forever. Um, that, you know, the purpose is to get the books out. But uh, yeah, we have a lot of people that have their favorite ones. A lot of people like to paint them to look like their houses. I see. <laughs> That's cute. Anybody have questions for Cindy or Ellen or, and uh, unfortunately Kelsey had to get off the, the uh, call, but I'm sure that she would be more than happy to talk to you about her ideas as well. Yeah. Well, just with uh, 
grant funds and, and generous people, it hasn't cost us much to do this project, and which is a good thing because we don't have much. So uh, it works for us. Where'd you get the grant funds, Cindy? It was a it was a county grant that uh, was through the CRA. So okay, yeah, that was great. So and it, it helps to have people that like to do woodworking too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's it's kind of rallied people in the community around it. You know, the uh, people feel protective and you know that it's it's our project so it's been a good uh, community spirit builder yes definitely and how much was the C grant originally you don't um, see she got them 600 I think the grant was only 2500 it was not a huge grant well, still it just shows what you can do with right and and she's a good she's a good uh, person, you know, you really have to have somebody that takes it on as their project. Like if a, if a library were to do it, I would say it'd be the equivalent of at least, a, a, you know, a 1.5 FTE to, to really keep it going at the level we have. But we have like the paint store gives us the paint, you know, the, I mean, we have a lot of donors that, that make it and, and, and the, the administrator, she's donating her time. So that, that's what makes it affordable for us. So anyone in the community can can be a steward. Is that correct? Well, yeah, they just have to they just have to submit their name to Mary. She keeps a list and, and she kind of it's not really first come, first serve. I mean, because we're looking for certain locations. So if you happen to live in the magic spot where there's not a whole lot of them, you'll get yours before somebody will get one that maybe if there's a uh, you know, uh, a one on another block that's mm -hmm. close by. So we try to keep them. But you can, um, on Facebook, uh, there's a page, uh, the Lake Worth Library, um, Lake Worth Little Free Library Project. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, there's, you know, a, uh, a page, you know, so. There, you know, you can you can find out about it. Just it's just uh, Lake Worth Little Free Library. Uh, Ellen asks, do you have a sticker on the Little Free Library of what can be added? Yeah, we do have a little information card that's laminated that goes on the um, the front of the Little Free Library, and everyone is registered with the Little Free Library Project internationally, and they keep a um, a map where you can see where all, all of them are. But every steward, you get a little orientation packet that explains, you know, kind of the rules and regs. And so it, it's not huge, but it does give guidelines um, as to, you know, how things are supposed to look and that kind of thing. And how well have they been received? I mean, well, I mean, everybody, everybody loves them. We get we get emails from people of in fact I I was listening about the van uh, a lady her family came from we're not too far from Boca drove up from Boca just to see you know and follow the map and and go to the different ones and and see what they look like I mean it's a little bit of a tourist attraction. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, People well, do say, what are all these little houses you have? And then you can tell them they're libraries. Oh. Because they do look like kind of a big birdhouse. But, yeah, I guess I guess that's probably true, but I don't. Yeah, but we do have tons of pictures of them. If you go to the, awesome. go online, right. you can see them. Are they on your uh, website, your library's website? Not my libraries, but the Lake Worth Little Free Library website. Okay. And the, also the Facebook page. She keeps all that. I mean, you can find them um, on our city's uh, website because it is part of the city, but it's um, she has more pictures. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, mm -hmm. we're about out of time. I want to thank everybody who came and for those of you who spoke. And if you have any questions, I'm sure that um, we'll be happy to, to push them to the right person, or you can write down your friend's name and say, where is this person? <laughs> How can I get up with them? Because we'd love to connect you. 
Um, I'm sorry. No, it's been very good. I loved all these ideas about these mobile libraries. It's really fascinating. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this recording will be available on our uh, BLD's YouTube channel. So please, if you are here just for a minute or two, and or if you have friends who want to take a look, we'd love to have you share that with them. Um, our next uh, DLIS discussion will be on February 15th at 3. Um, and we'll be talking about, um, we'll be actually brainstorming uh, grant ideas. Um, and we'd love to have you come and bring whomever you would like uh, to that discussion. We're always looking for ideas um, and, and interested in helping people with uh, fleshing out their ideas on uh, uh, a, a um, an application for grant, LSTA grant. Um, thanks so much for joining us today and y'all stay safe and healthy and we'll see you next time, I hope. Bye-bye. <laughs>